Welcome back to another generic tutorial where I teach you how to animate things because apparently people want things animated. So, for this example, I'll be using character 3, the most recent character I have, but of course you can do this with any other character. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up our scene, copy it, do a new general project, A, X, delete it. We don't need anything in there at the moment. I'm going to turn on screencast key so you guys can see what I'm doing. And in an, and because we're going to be animating something, you guessed it, we're going into the animation work state flow. Now, um, there's a couple of things that you're going to want to do right off the bat. What you're going to want to do is you're going to go press A, I, and I is the key bind in order to insert a keyframe. Everything is done with keyframes. You set their position and, you know, it goes there. The only things that you don't want to keyframe are the ones that I'm just selecting now, which are the ones set by the arms and these two bits by the legs. Those are the only ones that you do not want to keyframe. So then press I, lock rot. Now, um, get their location and rotation of every single bit. Now, what you'll realize is that if we select other things, we can't see other assets down here in our dope sheet or timeline. So to fix that, we're going to uncheck this, which is the show only the selected items. And now we can see everything there. Now, of course, move this along in the timeline, and let's... Uh, move it down. What you'll notice is if you move it again, it won't save there. So what you can do is, of course, you can go down, press I, lock rot, and do that for all of the bits, and that works fine, but pressing I a bunch of times isn't the most helpful thing. So what we can do instead is enable this, which is automatic keying, which means if we move something now, it'll automatically put keyframes in between it. Now. Let's say you don't like how this is easing. Let's say um, this is like a curve, like a nice little, it goes a nice little Bezier curve, and you don't like that. What we can do is we can select the two keyframes that are interpolated between, press T, and select the linear. What that'll do is it'll have a constant. There's a bunch of options in here. Most of the time you're just going to use Bezier, but let's say you want a very specific very specific Bezier. What we can do is we can press Control Tab, and once again, uh, deselect only selected, and normalize it. What normalization does is it makes sure that uh, all the values go from zero to one, so that way you can see them in this format. Sometimes you don't want to normalize it. Sometimes you do. Most of the time, you might want to normalize it. But let's and then let's change how this curve is. You probably, if you've used other programs before, you probably would recognize something like this. And you can see that it's following this curve. So once again, control tab to go back to our general dope sheet, and then control tab goes into our graph editor. Um, those are the basic things. Of course, um, what you do also want to remember is that since you have sometimes you don't have keyframes in between, all you need to do is then just move the actual duplicate it with Shift D and move it over, and that will put a nice little keyframe where you have it. So that's this tutorial. This is the end of this tutorial. You can do this with any character. Just reposition things, move them about. You know as you do uh, and you can get more advanced things if you so desire that's the end of this tutorial I don't have any more information um, except for the fact that if you want more possible area like this isn't enough and you see it goes to 250 and then resets just scale up this end thing just, uh, and because we're at a total of and if we go into here we just see 24 frames per second we can turn our 24 frames per second into something like 30, which would make it go faster and give us more space in between. So that's the end of this tutorial. I know most of you aren't subscribed, 
I can see those statistics. So of course, subscribe if you want to see more content. If you're just looking at this one video because you just want to look at this one video, that's okay. Still subscribe. It does nothing for you. It does things for me. Um, and yeah, that's the end of the tutorial. Thank you.